G'day guys, in this video I'm just going to run through how to make off an Anderson plug using a crimper. So we won't be soldering. Personally, I prefer crimping everything when I have the chance. Not to say that solder doesn't have its place, but wherever possible I'll try and crimp things. So we'll be fitting off an Anderson plug. We'll be going through the difference between the red and the grey Anderson plugs, whether or not to heat shrink the back of it, how to release the cable from the Anderson plug, and just a few other accessories that you can buy. So a nice quick video and we'll jump into it now. The red Anderson and the grey Anderson are keyed differently, just slightly, so they will not connect together. So here we have a red and grey Anderson plug, and you can see the difference in this notch that's being highlighted on the screen. That is the reason that these will not connect together. In every other way, these are the same. They both can be purchased with different amperage ratings. They both can be purchased with different size lugs included. They both take the same external accessories, the same dust boots, the same T-handles. The only difference is that the red one normally is used for a solar connection to indicate that this is a solar supply. An unregulated power supply could be 20 something volts and it could blow up your 12 volt accessories. So it's just an indicator. In theory, there's nothing to stop you using reds everywhere, but you need a red to connect to a red and you need a gray to connect to a gray. So just briefly on Anderson plugs and the reason we use them, they come in plastic bags, they come in boxes. Some have instructions, some don't. This one does. You can get gray and red. Red normally is used as an indicator to say that it's a solar feed. You buy them with different size lugs. This gray one is 50 amp. The crimp lugs on the inside are 10 to 12 gauge. The red one is also 50 amp. The crimp lugs are eight gauge. So today I'll be installing the eight gauge onto there with some eight gauge cable, red and black. So this is a fit off Anderson plug with the lugs and cable attached. So the Anderson plugs have polarity markings on them, so you can't get them wrong. In regards to crimping the Anderson plug, or any cable for that matter, the best tool to use is something like this, which is a hydraulic press. They have different size dies, depending on what pack you buy. This does everything from four mil all the way up to 70 mil squared. The dies are marked, so you can see what size you're using, and they give the best possible crimp. These are big solid bits of metal. They give you the perfect crimp. Not only is this the best tool for the job, it's actually also quite cheap for what you get. Considering a good pair of nutcrackers will actually cost you more than this hydraulic crimp and won't do as good a job. This is a cheap pair of nutcrackers. So the nutcrackers work the same, except you use leverage instead of hydraulics. You have this die up here, which rotates around for your different sizes. These do not leave a good crimp. These sizes, to me, are inaccurate and you need to spend a lot of money to get a proper good pair of these. Spending $50, $60 on these won't get you a very good crimp and a really bad result. Now, if your cables are small enough, there are also ratchet crimpers that you can use. I personally would not recommend using ratchet crimpers when for the same price you can get a hydraulic crimping set with dies that create the perfect crimp. Not only that, use less pressure to get the job done. So for this video, I'll be using the hydraulic crimper, but I'll leave links for both of these two in the description. This is by far the best option to go with. Now what happens inside the Anderson plug is you have two contacts in there that are spring force. The lug, once it's crimped, pushes in there. The spring force will connect these and hold them against each other like that with opposing forces acting on each one. To pull the plugs apart, you just pull and overcome that force. So the two opposite ends, click over there. That's what holds this together, stops it from ever coming loose. It won't vibrate loose. There is spring tension on that, holding that in. On the other side, you'll notice there is a little lip. What that lip does is hold the cables inside the Anderson plug. These are your two spring tension tabs in here. That lip clicks in and you'll hear it click when you push the cable in and then the cable can't be pulled out. If you want to pull the cable out after this little lip has locked in, you need to depress this spring tensioner with a screwdriver. Now, if your Anderson plug does come with instructions, it'll tell you a few different things like how much copper you need to strip back, as well as how much distance you should have before you do your final crimp, depending on the size of the Anderson plug you have here. So for this particular version, we have six and a half millimeters in 
and the maximum span there is NA. It is just the width of one crimp. So we don't double crimp these, we one crimp and we leave the front bulbous part untouched. So we roughly have our 14 millimeters there, eight gauge, perfect fit. Now we make a crimp, eight gauge being 8.3 mil using an eight mil die, single crimp. And basically what we wanna do is this bell shape at the end, we wanna leave untouched. We wanna go just inside that and make our crimp, leaving both ends of the lug untouched. Once the cable is lugged, you can push it into the terminal, remembering that the bump is facing down. So making sure you have the right polarity, you can see your spring tension. We push this little lip up against the spring tensioner so it clicks in, and there you have a solid click. You see how that is clicked in with that bolt facing downwards. It is unable to be pulled out, the cable. To get it out, we need a screwdriver. We need to depress this spring tensioner and then try and pull the cable at the same time. Just like that. Using a screwdriver, I depressed this spring on the inside that allowed this lug, this little lip here, to pull back. So one more time, we have that little lip. We'll clip over the back of the spring tensioner. The spring tensioner will be putting force that way, which will hold this larger bulge against an opposing pin. Now, if you want, you can heat shrink over this, but leave the front half alone. Just heat shrink this very back bell shape onto the cable. You don't want to heat shrink the whole thing because you want contact here. So if you look down the back of the Anderson plug, you can see that bell housing where the copper connects. You can heat shrink over that little portion of it at the back portion. You just want to avoid the heat shrink affecting the contact. You want the spring tensioner and the lug to be a clean connection and just make everything nice and clean at the front end of the lug. But if you did want to put a tiny bit on the back end, you can go ahead and do that. With that in mind, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of this on the black and red. This is dual heat shrink, has a glue resin inside and I'll just provide a nice seal from here to that exposed copper. So I personally would avoid going right up to this bulbous part that you've left clean after the crimp. I think anything on the crimp is fine, even just keeping it towards the back and making sure you get a good seal around the actual insulation of the cable. There is no need to heat shrink these, you don't actually have to do it, but I just like to do it for extra protection. So that is the end result. Might be able to see little bits of glue coming out the back there. That's created a seal from that exposed copper onto the lug, but it's left all the lug forward. That needs electrical contact, clean of any insulation. So making sure we have our polarity right, we have our positive connected already. This tiny little tab on the back will click over the spring tensioner. The spring tensioner will force this in this direction. So you can see there the cable is almost clipped in, but not quite. You just want that nice click, and then that is a solid connection. Now we have no exposed copper going in, but we have the lug with good connection on the front. So I'll just disconnect this red just to get the heat shrink on the lug. There we go. Now we'll let this cool, we'll push it in and we'll go make a connection. Another thing you can add to your Anderson plug is a dust cover. Cutting here, feed your cables through, and that's just a little extra bit of protection. Now we have our freshly made Anderson plug, and this is just an example of where you would use it. This is where I will be using my Anderson plug. From inside the canopy, I have the solar feed for the Red Arc BMS30, which is a DC-DC charger. That comes to here. Now, when I have a solar panel mounted on the roof, this cable will connect to it, and it will simply get connected in here. And that is a solid waterproof connection put dust covers on these outgoing cables, they go up and join into a solar panel. When I want to isolate the solar panel, I can pull this Anderson plug out. So you'll notice these two holes here. That is for a T-shaped handle you can get to pull them apart. The reason being is that they do take a bit of force to get apart. If you're in an awkward position, you might want a T-handle piece. 
because I am standing here and I can get good purchase, I don't need the T-handle piece. One of the key benefits to having a fixed solar panel come through an Anderson plug is that you can fit to this Anderson plug a piggyback connector which allows you to connect two Anderson plugs in parallel. So what you do is connect your fixed Anderson plug into one end and then you can add a portable solar panel or a solar blanket to the other end. And what this does when you connect them in parallel is basically adds the wattage together so you get a higher input into your battery. That can be used for boosting the battery for a quicker charge or if you park your car in the shade and you have a solar blanket or a portable solar panel, you can run that solar panel out into the sun and still charge your battery while your car is parked in the shade. So here's an example of an Anderson plug in use. This is my fridge connection here. So that is switching power to and from that Anderson plug. This gray will attach to a fridge that will connect in there and it won't rattle loose. All right, there you go. So Anderson plug is pretty easy, pretty cheap, $10 plus the cost of cable. It comes with the lugs inside. You'll just need a crimping tool. You don't need a hydraulic crimper. You can crimp with cheaper ratchet crimping tools or nutcracker style crimping tools. I think it's worth getting a crimping tool if you're doing a lot of 12 volt stuff. But Anderson plugs are brilliant. They won't rattle loose and it'll give you a good solid connection. You can buy bigger than 50 amps. You can go up to 125, 175. Um, there's some quite large Anderson plugs that you can buy. So they have a really high amp rating, really good solid connection. They are watertight and then you can add accessories. So if you have an open Anderson plug, you can get a watertight cap that goes over it. You got the dust boots if you want to be extra precautious and there's plenty of good accessories to go with them.